Today, I'm making a game in Google Docs. As a game developer who has made games in Scratch, PowerPoint, and Google Sheets, I'm somewhat of a master of unconventional game engines. So for this video, I'll be using the word processor most known for resumes, essays, and the like to make a visual novel. Watch to the end to see how you can play my game for yourself. I don't have a particular story in mind, so let's use ChatGPT to come up with a protagonist and a setting. I'm making a Visual novel. Give me 10 options for interesting, cool, or wacky protagonists. Okay, that is a lot. Out of these, I think I am most interested in the time traveling detective, a private investigator who can jump through different time periods to solve crimes. Let's go with that. Now, onto the setting. Give me 10 settings for a visual novel that are weird or wacky. Ooh, okay, I like this one. A monster school. A high school exclusively for monsters. The protagonist, a human accidentally enrolled, must blend in with werewolves, vampires, and other mythical beings while uncovering the school's dark secrets. Let's go with these two. With the story and setting in place, here's the game's premise. You are a human detective who goes undercover to a school exclusively for monsters. Someone has been stealing the lunch food, causing the monsters to go hungry and start eating humans. You are on a mission to solve this school's greatest mystery. Who is the elusive, hungry culprit? <clears throat> a better plot than Call of Duty. Now, you might be asking yourself, how is it possible to make a game in Google Docs? Don't you need to code? I'll be using Google Docs bookmark feature. Bookmarks are typically used to help people find content or move around, but I'm using it to add narrative choices to my game, similar to when a visual novel presents you with dialogue options. With bookmarks, I can have the player click on a choice, which will take them to another section of the document with what happens next. Through just bookmarks, you can create an interactive fiction game. And thus, my 8,000th justification for why I don't need to learn how to code emerged. Now you may be asking yourself, why are you making a game in Google Docs other than to waste your time? Making a game before a deadline or making a game to fit a certain theme. Sometimes these games can be more fruitful than ones where you have full creative freedom. Not to mention, game development isn't the most accessible medium. To make games, you need a computer that can run intensive engines like Unity or Unreal. To enter the industry, you likely need a college degree, and many people pay for expensive networking conferences. Yes, my game is gimmicky, but it works, and that's what matters. It is finally time to write the damn story. Given the ridiculous nature of the story, I went for a blunt tone with occasional humor. As a games writer, I typically write stories about grief, identity, coming of age, and now I am writing whatever the hell this is. Alas, with my writing prowess, this was going to be the best Google Doc game about a detective going undercover as a monster there ever was. The competition is Fias. Moving on to art, I didn't want this game to just be a text adventure, so I drew little doodles to accompany the story. Since my story is so unique, it really led to creative drawings. I can't say I've ever drawn so many monsters in my life, or that I've ever drawn one before this. I went for a simple, cute style to match the humorous tone of the story. The final game ended up being 31 pages of pure glory. This was gonna rival Metal Gear Solid 3. Move over, Kojima. There's a new and improved game director in town. And of course, the purpose of games is to have players, so let's have someone playtest with baby. A new case came in. A gruff man with a cigar half in his mouth said, and you're the man for the job. This guy doesn't look very gruff. I mean, you look at him, like I said, he's got some fierce eyelashes here, though, I will say. He's actually looking kind of, I um, might make me act up. That gruff man was Brian, the chief of police. What are the details? I replied. Someone's been stealing the food from a local monster academy. I shrugged. That's the big case? You better wipe that grin off your face, he continued. Because of this, monsters have been going hungry and eating humans. We need your expertise as a time traveler to find the culprit, go back in time, and save innocent lives. All right, so I got time traveling. This is gonna be a pretty cool ability that surely I am only going to use for good. We'll find out. If you can pull this off, I'll promote you to lead detective, Bryant said. When I first became a detective, I thought I'd be visiting grotesque crime scenes, catching cold-blooded killers. Instead, I was sitting in a grossly uncomfortable disguise in a history of vampires class, surrounded by real vampires. Does anyone smell that? A vampire next to me said. It smells like human. I thought it was just me, but you're right. 
There's fresh blood somewhere in this room, another vampire chimed in. Hey, the vampire looks straight at me. You're new here, and why do you smell like a human? I just gotta say, this vampire, just like the police chief, they all got fierce eyelashes. So we got three options. I am one, I just ate one, I'm in love with one. So I think we just gotta say, I'm in love with one. We're taking the twilight route. The vampire leaned in further and whispered. You know that's against the school rule book, right? I probably should have read that. If you could keep it a secret for me, I'd really appreciate that, I whispered back. You've got a bro in me. The vampire held out his hand for a fist bump. All right, hey, GG's, real brothers. I sighed in relief as my hand met his knuckle. Crisis averted. All right, we live to see another day, chat. Then came my next challenge, lunch. I had to be laser focused. This was the crime scene. I sat down at an empty table and examined the lunch line. Then I saw it. A door with a number lock at the back of the cafeteria. This had to be where the food was stored. That's it? I am hungry! An ogre pulled the lunch lady's shirt, lifting her off the floor. Poor human. That's kind of mean. I thought the ogre was... Reasonable? Aggressive? Cute? <laughs> you already know the answer. I had previously only been interested in humans, but the ogre had plump lips, which was my weakness. Not only plump lips, like I said, those eyelashes. The ogre must have noticed my stare, because he marched furiously at me. What are you looking at? He said. I... I... I was just admiring you, I stammered. As I turned to leave the room, the ogre smiled. Oh, he's kind of into it. Well, thank you, but sorry, I'm not into your kind. He shrugged and walked away. That's a little bit racist. My eyes rapidly scanned the rest of the room. Most monsters were rubbing their bellies and complaining. I noticed three monsters suspiciously quiet. A hairy beast. He sat in the corner of the room, mouth open, napping without a care in the world. A rock monster. Yes, a literal rock, I wrote in my notes. I paused. Do rocks even eat? An ethereal angel. She was laughing at something her friend said, but while they looked famished, she was as beautiful as ever. I had my suspects, but now it was time for physical education. This was a class Chief Bryant warned me the most about. A beast stretching approached me with his posse of other monsters. So what's your special ability? To get into the school, every monster had to audition with a special skill. Thankfully, Chief Bryant prepared me for this. I can read minds. I can outrun anyone. I can predict the future. I think I'll go with I can read minds. Oh yeah? What number am I thinking about, the beast said. 42. That's not the number I was thinking of. The beast shook his head. Are you lying to us, face hag? The imp sauntered near me. Let's teach this monster a lesson. The monsters leaped toward me with their full might, eager to turn me into a pulp. This is probably a good moment to rewind time. We're back. What are we going to do this time? You want to run it back one more time? I think we go with 12 this time. I think we go with 2 this time. This monster is legit! The beast howled in excitement. Monsters, he could be a good addition to our posse. You're one of us now. The imp put their arm around my shoulder. Listen, it was a one in three chance I was gonna get it. Only took me three tries. Now that I had proven my monster identity, I had returned to the case. So, have you guys heard anything about that lunch thief? I saw that there was a door at the back of the cafeteria with a lock. What's up with that? I leaned back into the bench nonchalantly. I heard the combination is the year the school was founded, the imp said. Now that was the information I was looking for. When was the school founded? No one knows. They scrubbed the records. I excused myself to the bathroom and closed the stall. Time for some digging. Rewind time by 10 years. All right, we're going way back now. I opened my eyes. I was still in the same bathroom stall. I exited and walked around the school. The school looked identical to before. Time to get out of here before it's too late. Rewind time by 20 years. The bathroom stalls were the same, but the floor tiles were now mint green. Then Mr. Hollowbrood was like, monster promise canceled. All because a dragon set the classroom on fire. A voice boomed from outside the stall. I peeked through the cracks and saw a Hydra speaking to the Phoenix. Yep, I'm still in a monster academy. The stall I was once in became a grimy hole in the floor. A vampire walked in, took off his pants, and started relieving himself next to me. All right, rewind 15 more years. The hole was now filled with monster droppings. Damn, I need a raise after this. Rewind 483 years. With all this traveling, I was hungry. Did sandwiches exist at this time? When was the founding of the sandwich? Now that's the question I was more interested in. Rewind until I finally found the date. The year was 2834 BC. And no, sandwiches didn't exist at this time. Rewind to present day. With the code to the cafeteria lock, I now had all the information I needed. I waited for the school employees to leave when I tried the lock. Bingo. As I started shifting through the piles of food, I heard a shuffle behind me. I turned around and pointed my flashlight towards the sound. The door to the cafeteria was now open. The perpetrator had escaped. As I made my way toward the exit, I spotted something white on the floor. I held my flashlight to the item. A feather. The culprit was obvious. It was an angel, the beast, a vampire. The angel. You did it, Brian slowly clapped. You infiltrated the monster school without detection, and human lives were saved because of it. How did you know it was the angel? The feather, chief. Who else has white wings? I said. Take the day off. You deserve it. Bryant excused me. Before you go, you forgot this. 
Bryant handed me a name tag. You'll need this, lead detective. I got the promotion. That rests the case. Kyle, lead detective, signing off. If you want to try this game for yourself, there will be a link in my description where you can play it for free. I edited a ton of writing out of this video, so I would definitely recommend checking it out. If you like this video, subscribe and leave a comment with what game dev challenge I should do next. Be sure to check out my Patreon where I offer bonus content, one-on-one -on -one consulting, and game dev resources. The next video is going to be about ARGs, so stay tuned for that.